are four groups of medications working on renin and jotensin aldosterone system (RAS). When the first two groups of medications, ACE inhibitors and angiotensin II receptor blockers, modify the effects of angiotensin, renin inhibitor blocks the effect of renin at the very early stage of RAS. Now, in this lecture, we will discuss the medications that work on the last step in RAS. This group of medications antagonizes the effect of aldosterone. After this lecture, I wish to accomplish the following objectives. The effects of aldosterone are different during normal physiological sodium stimulation and pathological sodium retention. Normally, increased angiotensin II, adrenocorticotropic hormone, and potassium stimulate adrenal cortex to release aldosterone. Aldosterone balances sodium and potassium as well as offsets the activated renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system by reducing plasma renin and angiotensin II. In situation of heart failure, sodium is pathologically loaded. Aldosterone, responding to that, increases left ventricular hypertrophy, fibrosis, as well as atrial fibrillation, worsening heart failure, and increases peripheral vascular resistance. Aldosterone antagonists work directly on the hormonal side of RAS. In particular, counteracting the effects of aldosterone and resulting in decreased retention of sodium and water by the kidneys. The further effects are diuresis, as well as decreased blood pressure and preload. Aldosterone antagonists belong to the category of antihypertensives. The available aldosterone antagonists in the United States are spironolactone and eplerinin. Spironolactone is a much older aldosterone antagonist, which is developed in 1950s. At that time, our understanding of its therapeutic mechanism was limited. We only knew spironolactone affects the ion transportation at the epithelial level, resulting in potassium-retaining diuresis. Therefore, spironolactone was and has been categorized as a potassium-sparing diuretic. Now, as we gain a better understanding on how hormone and its blockers, we have learned that the aldosterone antagonist or mineral corticoid receptor antagonist can affect aldosterone on both epithelial and non-epithelial levels. The result from the hormonal blocking effect is lowering blood pressure. Eplerinin is the newest medication in the class of aldosterone antagonists. When both spironolactone and eplerinin share almost equal effectiveness, they are differentiated from each other by their structure and adverse effects. Here is a brief comparison of these two medications. Spironolactone belongs to both categories of potassium-sparing diuretics as well as aldosterone antagonists. Eplerinin is mostly identified as an aldosterone antagonist because it has a more specific receptor to target at. Eplerinin has a reduced sexual adverse effects comparing to the synthetic steroid spironolactone, which affects a wider spectrum on both mineral corticoid receptors and sexual steroid hormone receptors. By now, we should be very familiar with this diagram. This is the physiological mechanism of RAS. Aldosterone antagonists interrupt the aldosterone effects right at the intracellular receptor sites. As a result, Aldosterone antagonists inactivate the production of mediator proteins, which normally stimulate the sodium-potassium exchange. In other words, mediator protein deficiency prohibits reabsorption of sodium and interrupts the excretion of potassium and hydrogen cations. Therefore, the sodium and water are excreted, blood pressure is decreased, and so is preload. Adverse effects are dose-related, high-dose diarrhea as well as headache, dizziness, and fatigue 
are common side effects associated with aldosterone antagonists. High-dose hyperkalemia is the worst adverse effect. Also, the aldosterone antagonists affect the hormonal balance. When they interrupt the mineralocorticoid effects, the progesterogenic and antiandrogenic effects lead to abnormal vaginal bleeding and gynecomastia. Teaching patients the signs and symptoms as well as management of adverse effects are important in nursing care. Patients should report to the physician if experiencing any side effect during aldosterone antagonist therapy. Hyperkalemia warrants a thorough patient history intake and assessment because various patient factors can contribute to the incidence of hyperkalemia. The single most significant risk factor is the level of renal function. Other risk factors include usage of medication, for example, using high-dose spironolactone or eplerinone, or taking an aldosterone antagonist in combination with other medication that can alter potassium levels. Avoiding high-potassium diet should be included in patient education. Just like taking any antihypertensive medication, when the patient is using aldosterone antagonists, Blood pressure and heart rate should be monitored prior to administering every dose of medication. While this medication is to treat hypertension, the adverse effects resulting from hypotension should not be neglected. Patient education should include prevention of orthostatic hypotension. To avoid GI irritation, take medication with food. Food to offset diarrhea includes white starch, such as potatoes, white rice, white bread. The patient should be educated to avoid operating machinery if experiencing central nervous system adverse effects, including headache, dizziness, drowsiness, lethargy, and fatigue. Call 911 if experiencing any anaphylactic symptoms. Aldosterone antagonists are now an add-on medication to treat resistant hypertension. The effects of spironolactone are evident in weeks and last for months, with no discrimination on ethnicity. The second indication for aldosterone antagonists is left ventricular hypertrophy. Combination of diuretic can be used for patients who have heart failure. Here is a quick review of what we discussed earlier on how aldosterone works differently under sodium retention with heart failure. An aldosterone antagonist can offset this pathological response of worsening heart failure by aldosterone. Spironolactone can be used for diuretic-induced hypokalemia. Aldosterone antagonist can cause harm to developing fetus. It is contraindicated during pregnancy. Also, the major metabolites is excreted into breast milk. Thus, it is also contraindicated for breastfeeding. Of course, this medication is also contraindicated to patients who are allergic to it. Other contraindications include acute renal insufficiency with anuria, Addison disease, or hyperkalemia. Adosterone antagonists should be used with caution on patients who have fluid and electrolyte imbalance or impaired kidney or liver function. Nursing care for contraindications include the following. Collect medical history and drug allergies prior to initiating therapy. Patient education of these contraindications, especially for female client, they should report to the physician at once if they are pregnant. Several groups of medications can interact with an aldosterone antagonist. Antihypertensives that work on RAS can increase adverse effects of aldosterone antagonists. ACE inhibitors and ARBs can increase risks of hyperkalemia and hypotension. Acetosalicylic acid, aspirin, and other salicylates may decrease the therapeutic effects of spironolactone. Spironolactone can decrease the anticoagulant effects when used together with an anticoagulant. Low molecule weight heparin puts the client at risk for hyperkalemia. Cholesteramine puts the client at risk for both hyperkalemia and metabolic acidosis. 
spironolactone can affect the renal clearance of digoxin and lithium, leading to toxicity of these two medications. When drug-to-drug -drug interactions are concerned, nursing care should include the following. Make a list of medications that the patient is currently using. Monitor potassium levels when patient uses medications that can alter potassium level. Such medications include ACE inhibitors, ARBs, heparin, cholesteramine, NSAIDs, potassium supplement, and potassium sparing diuretics. Monitor the therapeutic effects of aldosterone antagonists. Increasing doses may be needed when the patient uses spironolactone with a medication that can decrease the therapeutic effects. Medications like such are acetylsalicylic acid, aspirin, and other salicylates. Monitor PT and INR when patient is also on anticoagulant. Monitor for drug toxicity when patient is also on digoxin or lithium. Here we have drug to herbs and drug to food interactions. Licorice has an aldosterone like effect. Using licorice with spironolactone may block ulcer healing and increase risk of hypokalemia. Potassium rich diet, such as salt substitute, citrus fruits, and tomatoes, increases risk of hyperkalemia. Nursing care for drug to herb and drug to food interactions include. Advise the patient to not to take licorice together with spironolactone. Monitor patient's potassium level routinely when on medication. Potassium imbalance is an issue when the patient takes antihypertensives that works on rest. Teach the patient on how to avoid hyperkalemia through proper diet. An aldosterone antagonist produces diuresis. Therefore, medications from this group are best taken in the morning to avoid nocturia. If there is a second dose, it is better to take it in the early afternoon with food. Patient should be advised of possible breast enlargement or tenderness caused by sexual hormone-like effect. The diuretic effect occurs in two to three days, but the maximum antihypertensive effect occurs in two weeks. Among these three aldosterone antagonists, carinin is not available in the United States. Thank you for spending time with me. I look forward to seeing you in the next lecture.